All right, so what you want to do is get the jack lined up on the spot. There's a spot right here for the jack, and just get it lined up, and then get it tight, and just jack up the side. Make sure your brakes on in the car. Yeah, that too. And only do one side at a time. <laughs> And always, always use jack stands. Do not leave it on a jack, because it will fall. And you want to get the jack on the frame rail. I go back and forth one side, because it gets a little sketchy. You go real high. All right, so a little trick too when you're changing your oil, always want to pull your dipstick out a little bit and then loosen the cap because it acts as a vent and it'll bring the oil better and faster. All right, so the first thing you got to do is take your skid plate off. There's three bolts, 12 millimeter here. So now that you have your skid plate removed, you got your drain plug here and filter is in between the exhaust manifold or header like I have. Um, so first you just want to remove your drain plug. So a uh, 17 millimeter wrench on most STIs and WRXs. Um, they're not all 17, but you just have to check it. Um, and then you just want to loosen the drain plug which is stupid tight. Holy crap. Ugh, there we go. I didn't change my oil last time, so... Make sure you get the washer off, too. Oil does come out fast, so just be ready for it. And mine's magnetic, so it's gonna get stuck. Just, uh, if you have a magnetic drain plug, just wipe it off. Get all the, if there's anything on there on the end. It's actually a very powerful magnet. Just put it to the side for now. Let this drain out. Okay, so then once it's pretty much done dripping, try to get the drain plug in without it sticking. If you have a magnetic plug. Which is very annoying. You don't have to get it tight right now, just snug it just so it doesn't leak. Um, if you have the regular um, drain plug, you're going to have to replace the gasket each time or else it will leak. So just remember that. Next, you want to take out your oil filter. So just move your drain pan underneath the filter. So, uh, you could use a wrench or just your hand. You don't really want to put it too tight, so it should come off by hand. But, like I said, I didn't change my oil last, so they probably put it on really tight. Oh, man. Alright, 
right, once you get the filter loose, which was stupid tight, should never be that tight. Uh, when you do loosen it, just uh, be mindful that oil will come flying out like that because it's upside down. I kind of just let it drain once it starts to leak out. <clears throat> Or if you want, just get your hands filthy and let it come out really fast. Tip it over just to drain out most of the oil. So yeah, just let that let that drain. Um, for filters, I use a uh, a Bosch Distance Plus. It's like 12 bucks at Walmart. It's kind of expensive, but it's a good filter. Um, Subaru blue filters are also very good. And uh, uh, that's pretty much all I would use in these. Um, or if you get like a K&N or something crazy, but um, just don't ever use Frams. Like, worst filter you could ever use. There's YouTube videos on it if you ever want to check it out. They're not made good at all. Um, if you want to, you can fill the um, the filter with a little bit of oil. Um, you don't have to do that. Um, in this case, it's doable because the filter is upside down, so um, it won't leak out. But like some, I know like on my Saturn, the filter is sits like this on the back side of the block. So if you put oil in there, it's just gonna spill out. It's kind of pointless. Um, I normally don't do it. Um, the main thing you do want to do though is um, lube the o-ring around the filter with oil um you could use new or old oil i mean i've used old oil all my life doing this and it doesn't hurt anything it's just you're just lubing the, the filter or the o-ring so i just dip my finger in the uh in the drip pan and just kind of just rub it around the side there all around the o-ring you don't have to do a lot it just needs to get lubed it's not going to kill a little old oil but everyone has their preference. It's not a big deal. If you use new oil, more power to you. It doesn't matter. I just, right now, type circumstances, I'm just going to use a little bit of old oil. And you also want to get a rag and just wipe down all around where the oil filter goes. Just make sure there's no dirt or anything like that. Any contaminants. Always make sure too when you pull the old filter off that the o-ring is on there. Sometimes you'll pull the filter off and the uh, o-ring will stick and if you go to put the new filter on with that o-ring on there it will spray oil everywhere. You don't want to do that. So always make sure that the plate is clean and there's no uh, the old, old the old o-ring isn't there and then just screw the new filter on. Now with the filter, it does not need to be stupid tight. Once you feel it catch, just go, it's usually about three quarters of a turn, but you'll feel it. And you know, you gotta know your own strength too for the next time you go to turn, take it off. But I'm gonna go like right there, right there. That's plenty tight. It does not need to be any tighter than that. That's why half the reason I do my own oil changes is because when you go to shops, they crank them on, they're so tight, and then they're impossible to get off, unless you have a wrench, and sometimes even then it sucks. So you can move your drip pan out of the way. And then, you always want to make sure that you tighten your drain plug, because you don't want to leave it loose. So tighten it back up, you want to get it pretty tight. Not stupid tight, but that's good right there, you just want to good snug on it wipe everything down so when you start it you'll know nothing's leaking and then that's pretty much it for down here um if it's your first time i would say leave the skid plate off and um add the oil and all that um and then you know start it and then put the skid plate back on. I normally just put the skid plate back on because I've done it a hundred times. But, um, actually probably more than that. But, um, for the video I'm going to leave it off and then add the oil.
All right, so take the cap off all the way. Leave your uh, dipstick up still. See any kind of crud in there, just clean it out. I went a little over on my oil change. I usually do it every 3,000 minutes. I'm at like 4,500 right now, so it's a little build up, not too bad. Um, and then get your oil. I use, if you guys can see this, I use Rotella T6. Um, I did probably a month's worth of research on oil and a lot of forums. And most guys, you know, swear by this stuff. Uh, this is probably my, I want to say, third or fourth oil change with this. Probably my third oil change with this. And I have had nothing but good things to say about this, this oil. Um, I don't lose an ounce of oil. I don't lose a drop of oil. It does not burn any of this oil off. Um, it's heavy duty. It's actually diesel oil. And um, it's like really extreme temperature stuff. Works really good, especially for these cars. I mean, these engines run very hot, especially when you, you know, treat them the way we normally treat them. So, um, yeah, this is what I use. I mean, it's not the only stuff you can use. Amsoil oil is pretty good. Um, but you want to stay away from like Mobile One and uh, Castrol, all that stuff. It's not really that good. Um, so this is what I use. Um, it's literally, I got this for 20 bucks at Walmart for a four quart jug. So it's not even that expensive at all. Um, and um, so yeah, we're going to pour, pour all four quarts in and then uh, tighten everything up and start it. Um, put the skid plate back on and then uh, lower the car and then we'll check the oil level and add any if it's, uh, if it's needed. Now, normally you should use a funnel, but a little trick too, if you're, um, if you hold the bottle sideways, you can actually pour it and it won't uh, gurgle on you. And just kind of aim it over the top and just pour it in. If you spilled anything, just wipe it down real quick. Just so you don't see any drops. Put the cap back on. And dipstick down. Alright, so after you pour the oil in, you know, put the cap back on and everything like that, put your dipstick down. Um, you can start the car on the jack stands, just be careful. And then um, just go underneath the car real quick to make sure nothing's leaking. Um, I'm not going to do it just because we're kind of in a tight spot and um, I've done it before, so. I pretty much know everything's good. Um, so once you know everything's good, nothing's leaking, shut it back off, and then um, you're gonna wanna put your skid plate back on and lower the car, take the jack stands out, and you'll be good to go. And then once the car's level, you can check the oil level, and if it needs extra, you could add a little bit. Usually it's about four and a half quarts, but we'll just double check to make sure. Okay, so. Putting the skip plate back on, same way it came off, just uh, try to get it lined up the best you can. About right there. And uh, just get one, uh, one screw started just so you can hold it up like that. And then you can start putting the other screws in. The bolts don't have to be super tight, just get them snug. And uh, this clip here, again, I think the uh, flat side goes down, pretty sure. And then, uh, don't forget about the two rivets on your side of the wheel wheels. Alright, so after you um, start, I already started it, um, let it run for a second, um, shut it down, um, just let it sit for like a minute or two, just let the oil go back down to the bottom of the pan, pull out your dipstick, and um, wipe it off with a clean rag, make sure to wipe it off good, and then check your oil level. Keep your dipsticks, dude. 
If you want to, you can pull up, um, loosen your cap, it'll help. Just let the oil come down. I'm gonna add like a half a quart, it's a little low. It's pretty close, right there. Probably use a smidge more, but I'm not gonna uh, mess with it because it's probably gonna um, come down more as the car sits. It takes a little while. So I'll leave it like that for now, and then tomorrow I'll probably check it again just to see where it's at and uh, add more if I need to. But it's usually about four and a half quarts. Um, which I put in, and um, that's pretty much it, you're done. So that's how you change your oil.